-hmm. Now, as we as as I think about the employees, I mean, I can only imagine for the employee themselves, they're not only dealing with this chronic illness, but it's compounded by, you know, probably guilt and 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 worry about what's going to happen with work yeah. and their livelihood and all that. So, completely different perspective on the other side of the table. I'm imagining. Share with us. Share with us what you find. Um. <clears throat> I find that I really stress to ask if the company and the employee um, meet the guidelines for family medical leave. I really mm -hmm. stress that if an employee needs that to go on it. And I, I kind of have made a checklist for them to make sure that the forms filled out right and they meet the deadlines because when they're in a flare, which is unpredictable, when it occurs or how long, you know, what they should be doing is being at home and and, and taking care of themselves instead of worrying about their job. Am I going to lose my job? And, you know, the stress of all, all that, they should just be thankful they're able to stay home. Mm -hmm. The other thing is uh, with job accommodations, they don't know what to ask for. You know, they don't know what they can ask for, what is too much, or, you know, what if it's rejected? And and I had one company that their HR department said, no, we want you to go to the doctor every 30 days and get it recertified. And I said, no, that's not the law. And so I had to go back and say, no, that's not the law and explain that to them, you know. Mm -hmm. So... I've helped with that. And then um, I've also helped individuals with disability when they're out, you know, just mm -hmm. I come in kind of like a doctor with the notes and how we've met and what we've worked on to feel better, to help them get that disability when they're off work for a while. 